We're back, and so now we want to uh, move up the time to one billion years ago. So this would be October the 13th on our cosmic calendar. And uh, the first land was made of islands, and then individual islands, but then as plate tectonics proceeded, the plates began to bump into each other. Now we're talking about ocean plates that were doing this, but as the ocean plates bumped into each other, you had subduction, and then that started the process of making granitic continents. And, and Rodinia uh, is the um, next to the last supercontinent. So the last supercontinent that the Earth had in its geological past was Pangaea. The supercontinent that existed before Pangaea was called Rodinia. And so at this time, Rodinia is assembled. So it's going to be all of the major continents put together. Now, there were other continents, uh, other supercontinents that existed before Rodinia. And uh, so just to give you a flavor for, for what existed before Rodinia, uh, we have uh, Volbera, which existed between 3.3 and 2.5 billion years ago. Then there was another supercontinent called Ur that existed about 3 billion years ago. Then there was another supercontinent that existed uh, and uh, 2.7 billion years ago called Kenora Land. And then 1.8 billion years ago there was another supercontinent called Columbia. And then we have Rodinia which existed between 1 and 1 billion and 700 million years ago. And then we're going to have uh, Pangaea that's going to exist after that. So the earliest supercontinents were small, but then they kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so you can see that Rodinia, with all of those continents put together, takes up about half of the um, southern uh, hemisphere. And you'll notice that um, at the southern hemisphere you have glaciation. And any time that these continents cut off the global circulation of ocean water, you're going to have ice ages. And so this supercontinent was so large, it was at the southern hemisphere, and it it disrupted the global ocean circulation and then that's what triggered the a massive ice age. Well, how massive was it? Okay, so uh, 700 million years ago Rodinia stops the flow of the ocean currents causing the entire earth to be covered in ice to a depth of one mile. So the entire planet was encased in ice to a depth of one mile. The global temperature was negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and so you might think that this would have caused a global extinction, but remember what kinds of life are we talking about? Bacteria. And so bacteria are very hardy organisms. But what about the photosynthetic bacteria? Would they have died because they're not getting any sunlight, well, they can go dormant because, again, they're bacteria. So the kinds of life that the Earth would have had at this point in history were, would have been able to survive these kinds of conditions. And then the breakup of Rodinia is, begins to happen, and then that's what's going to thaw the planet. So think about when you've got plates and they start to be pulled apart due, uh, at a divergent zone, what do you have in between? Volcanoes. Volcanoes are hot, so they began to melt the ice. And then when they finally, when the gases and stuff broke up through the ice, it was greenhouse gases, so water and CO2. And so that caused a greenhouse effect 
which then again made the ice melt even faster. So that we think that even though the, this was called a snowball earth, so we think that the earth was covered in ice, uh, it, was, it didn't last for very long, for only about 70 million years. Okay, let's take a break. And when we come back, there's a video that I want you to start watching.